Hello everyone, welcome back to another match review here on Play on GA. My name is Seamus Brady and I'm giving my immediate reaction to the Cork versus Kilkenny Allianz League hurling semi-final of 2022. It's just finished there in the last few minutes. Cork 127, Cork 2 goals and 20 points. A very, very impressive second half performance from Cork who look like their momentum and everything is just continuing. So, yeah, very interesting game. Let's get into it. Right at the start of the game, Kilkenny looked fantastic. Right from the beginning, Martin Keoghan hit an early goal for Kilkenny. Parvig Walsh went on a powerful run, well set by Michael Carey, who looked really impressive throughout the entire game. Um, Walsh's shot was well saved by Patrick Collins. It landed on the ground to Martin Keoghan into the back of the net. And Kilkenny, you know, early on, own Cody hit a beautiful point that made it 1-5 to 2 points, and that was after 10 and a half minutes. So Kilkenny exploded out of the blocks, looked very impressive at the start of the game, and this is without TJ Reid. So signs there that Kilkenny will be able to cope well when TJ is gone. However, Cork did just grow into the game as it went along. Alan Connolly was fantastic throughout the entire game. So too was Dara Fitzgibbon and Connolly Han in the first half especially. And one thing that was an absolute trade definitely of the first half was Kilkenny's discipline. They fouled over and over and over and over again. They gave away 13 frees in the first half and Patrick Hogan just kept pointing them and keeping Cork in the game. Um, on 11 minutes, 50 seconds, Alan Connolly was fouled. The ball ended up in the back of the net, but the referee had not allowed play to continue. That was unfortunate, but I understand why. Worrying signs there for Kilkenny because he absolutely roasted Conor Delaney. In the 15th minute, Keen Kenny had way too much time around the middle. He pointed that, made it 1 6 to 4 points. Then Patrick Hogan knocked over another free, 1 6 to 5. Then in the 17th minute, this could have been a bit of a game changer because Walter Walsh had a definite goal chance. He was running down the wing, well kind of stood up by Kieran Joyce. Walter turns back onto his left, fires a shot which hits the post of Patrick Collins' goal and goes out to the side and Cork get away with that one. And then straight down the other end um, into an Alan Connolly point and then Kieran Joyce tagged over another boom of a point from the wing-back position to make it 1-6 to 7 points. So that went from being a Kilkenny goal to two points for Cork. That's a key turnaround. Kieran Joyce, as I mentioned there, he was fantastic throughout the entire game. He's been one of the finds of the league. And yeah, he's just really maximizing his potential by the looks of things. Um, in the 20th minute, David Blanchfield was harshly done by Sean Stack. I thought Sean Stack didn't have the greatest of games as the referee, but Patrick Hogan converted that free, and that was Cork's fourth point in a row. And now it was one six to eight points. So Kenny a bit rattled. They'd only got one point since Keen Kenny's point in the 15th minute. Um, then in the 24th minute, there was a goal chance for Cork. It was a great move. A lot of Cork lads involved and worked its way out to Connolly Han on the left. He took a shot low, well pushed away by Owen Murphy. Then Murphy brilliantly gets up, makes a double save because he gets up and stops Patrick Hogan's shot. Ball comes out to Connolly Han. He chips it up and definitely was brought down by Hugh Lawler's foot. Referee didn't give the penalty. Kilkenny get away with that one that time. Then in the 27th minute, Billy Ryan hit a lovely point to make it 1-9 to 10 points. Then Fitzgibbon hit a lovely score in the 28th minute. So it was point for point up until the half hour mark where Martin Kyogen hit his second goal of the game. A beautiful pass by Michael Carey. Kyogen turned Darrow Lear and buried it low into the back of the net past Patrick Collins. The way he hit it as well, if you're looking at it on the replay, maybe you might think in the initial phase that look, maybe you should have saved that. But the fact that it was Roy Adam would have made it so awkward for Patrick Collins to get down to it. And it just goes into the back of the net. And just like that, 2-9 to 11 points. But once again, Kilkenny's Achilles heel in the first half. They're not, not cynical, but they're fouling. They're ill-disciplined. Because immediately, a foul on Horgan, he converts. Now it's 2-9 to 12 points. And then Porig Walsh gets a lovely score from the left wing to make it 2-10 to 12 points. Then Shane Barrett responded for Cork. Billy Ryan got a point. And then Kilkenny conceded their 13th free and Horgan converted that right before half time to make it 2-11 to 14. So there was a lot happening at the end of the first half. It was a very entertaining first half. Kilkenny went in at half time, leading though, however, 2-12 to 14 points. Um, both sides 
had similar amounts of scoring chances. Kilkenny had just hit the two goals. And to be honest, at this stage, I did think Kilkenny were going to win. I didn't see Cork coming back in the second half the way they did. But my God, they were fantastic. And um, Tim O'Mahony came in for Daryl O'Leary at half time, and he had a brilliant impact in the second half. Alan Murphy pointed straight from the throw in for Kilkenny that made it 213 to 14 points. Then in the 36 minute, Robbie O'Flynn hit one of the scores of the game, used his pace, took on David Blanchfield, and struck it over from a huge distance out. Then Connolly Han hit over another puck out. Uh, no, sorry, after turning over a puck out, he tagged on another point for Cork that made it 213 to 16 points. And then Buckley pointed for Kilkenny to respond. So a lively start to the second half as well. In the 39th minute, then Shane Kingston pointed for Cork. That made it a three-point game. In the 41st minute, Connolly Han hit a belter to make it 214 to 18 points. So Cork just kept staying in the game, even though Kilkenny were on top at this stage. But Cork seemed to have the momentum behind them as well. And a great score by Alan Connolly was making it made it 213 to 19 points. Tim O'Mahony put a point and that made it 214 to 20 points. No, so finally Cork had leveled the game, but they were yet to lead. This was a bit of a weird part of the game because when O'Mahony put this over, I genuinely thought Cork were going to kick on from here and maybe go on and, and really ram it home. But they didn't and they didn't score for 13 minutes after this. James Marr came in for Keane Kenny. He had a big impact because he added more kind of physicality around the middle. Alan Murphy pointed a tough free into a huge amount of cork noise behind him to put Kilkenny back into the league. Then Owen Cody tagged on a lovely score to make it 216 to 20 points. And then Cork didn't score until her Horgan pointed a free, as I mentioned, 13 minutes after O'Mahony's point. That brought it back to a one-point game. Then Horgan punished the Kilkenny mistake as Tim O'Mahony intercepted the Kilkenny pass. He gave it to Horgan and Horgan fired it over the bar, 216 to 22 points. Then Horgan was taken off for Jack O'Connor. Interesting move by the Cork management team, but I can see why they did it. In the 59th minute, Walter Walsh came in. Walter Walsh fouled Tim O'Mahony. I think, like... People make too much out of that. In my opinion, it wasn't a bad foul. O'Mahony seemed to turn weirdly and Walsh kind of caught him in the back with his shoulder. Not a hard free. Um, hard challenge, but not a dirty play, in my opinion. Yellow card, rightfully so. Then in the 62nd minute, Cork got a free and Conor Lehan stepped up. Now, for a man that hasn't been on the panel, this was a big moment. Lehan put it over the bar. 23 points to 216. And for the first time, Cork were ahead. That was a big moment. An easy equaliser for John Donnelly followed. That was one of the weirdest points of the game because he caught it and no one from the Cork defence was anywhere near him. And then in the 65th minute, the game changed. Dara Fitzgibbon got onto a pass from Connor Cahalan, used all his pace, ran right down the middle of the Kilkenny defence, buries in the back of the net. And now it's 123 to Cork, 218 to Kilkenny. A flash goal chance was straight after that. Alan Connolly could have made it two goals in a minute, but it was brilliantly hooked by Paddy Deegan. But straight away, they got another free in, and Lehan pointed that one. And then Dara Fitzgibbon hit a gorgeous point. Connor Lehan hit a beautiful point. And this was when Cork were really home and housed. Alan Murphy pointed a free, but Connor Lehan responded with one of his own. And Connor, and then, sorry, Porrick Walsh hit the final score of the game. Kilkenny had a bit of a flash goal chance right towards the end. They were through, but once again, Sean Stack, as he did multiple times throughout the game, called it back for free. And then they went for a goal from the free, but it was well saved. And the match was called full time. Cork 127, Kilkenny 220. Um, I don't really know where Kilkenny stand right now. Are they ahead of Cork? I don't think so. I think Cork are still above them in the pecking order. But it's hard to know where Kilkenny are at. Are they capable of winning on All Ireland? Because they were really good in the first half. You know, they really, especially in the first quarter, they really put Cork to the sword, but they just slowly lost their control over the game. Cork's youngsters, especially the lads coming in off the bench, Seamus Harnham, he had a big impact as well when he came in. And the fact that they took off Patrick Horgan and then had their burst where they got the goal and that's when they put Kilkenny away, that's worrying. I know maybe Cork play differently when Horgan's not on the pitch, they use the pace more, but... It's worrying for Kilkenny that they were so on top in the first quarter and then didn't manage to see the game out. Cork are definitely a coming force. You know, they've won all the under-20 All-Irelands. There's a lot of positivity in Cork hurling. I think it is going to be Cork and Limerick that are going to be the two 
the two teams over the next five years of, of hurling. Because when these Cork lads like Kieran Joyce come into the senior setup, they're going to make their mark. And Limerick are the team they want to take out, especially for last year's All Ireland final. So the, the hurling championship is so interesting right now because you've got obviously Limerick are the team to beat. Last year's All Ireland final performance was one of the best that there's ever been. But you've got Cork there coming with such momentum. You've got Waterford there coming with such momentum as well. And you've got Galway, Kilkenny, all these teams that are just kind of. We don't really know exactly where they're at. And then we've got the dark horses as well. You the likes of Wexford that are moving really well under Dara Egan. So I can't wait to see tomorrow's league semi-final as well. Between Waterford and Wexford, I think will tell us a great deal about those two teams as well. And this game tells me that Cork are in a really good spot. The, the energy that seemed to be at Cork and Cleveland was really, really good. Um, Kilkenny, I wouldn't get too worried about it. But at the same time, it is like a bit concerning that they were in the driving seat right at the start of that game and they didn't establish dominance over a Cork team that they would have, would have fancied themselves against a few years ago. So that's my opinion on the game. Cork into a league final against either Waterford or Wexford tomorrow. We'll have a full match review of the Waterford-Wexford game straight after tomorrow. Keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for all the content on Play Energy over the weekend. And until next time, guys, take care.